and welcome to Wednesday Night Online Bible Study. We are so glad that you have joined us this evening. My name is Jeremy, pastor here at Promise Church. Tonight we are going to continue in our series with Brother Ray Ortiz. So here's what I'd like you to do. Get your minds ready. Turn off all those distractions. Get that Bible in your hand. Brother Ortiz is going to continue speaking to us what he did last week. I know that you're going to be blessed. Praise the Lord and good evening. Uh, it is great to be with you guys once again. Um, we're going to dig back into the study about the things that limit us from getting closer to God here this week. Um, I want to thank Pastor Jeremy Mills for allowing me to bring this study uh, to you guys. It's something that I felt from God to bring. Um, and I'm glad that I was able to uh, have this opportunity to do this. Um, but really quickly, I just want to recap what we talked about last week. Uh, the three points that we talked about last week. The first one was we limit God because we have the lack of trust. Or we lack trust in our lives. Understand we must trust God in order to be able to move forward and be able to uh, continue this walk with him. We are always going to have to trust him, even though there are going to be times where we want to swave and we, there are going to be times where we don't feel him in our lives. But we must trust that he is there to give us strength so that we can move forward. The second point that we talked about was fear and sacrifice. Understand sacrifice is not easy. It's something that is difficult, and it's something that we have to work on um, every day in order to make sure that we're not holding on to something that is going to limit our relationship we have with God. It's not going to be easy, and if it is easy, it's probably uh, not a sacrifice, um, but sacrifice is going to be hard, and it's going to be hard to let go of things and people in our lives, relationships in our lives that we have cherished deeply in ourselves. And then the third point that we talked about last week is believing and relying on ourselves. Um, we tend to rely on ourselves, depend on ourselves, on our knowledge, on our understanding, and we don't allow God to move in our lives by, uh, by letting go of those things that, 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 that we like to control. And we don't allow God in our lives to, to move in our lives because we limit God because we think we know it all. Um, but the fact is that we don't le know it all. The Bible tells us that, not, that we can't lean on our own understanding. And we must understand that God is, needs to be in control of our thoughts and our walk with him. So those are the things that we talked about last week, and we have three more points today that I want to talk to, talk to you about. So let's get into it. Point number four, we live by feelings or, and emotions. There are so many Christians who struggle with prayer and taking the next step in walking with Jesus because they are merely waiting to feel good. They're merely waiting to, to, to have a sense of, uh, 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 of, of, of goodness in their lives rather than to love God and others no matter the cost. When we go to our Father in prayer, I ask you, do we release our burdens to Him or do we hold on to them as our own possessions? Do we really try to love Him and seek His will or do we try to beg Him to shape His will to our own? Do we really try to listen to him or do we want him to listen to us and us only? I ask you those questions here today. Is that what you're doing? Are you truly doing what you're doing because you want a closer relationship with God? Or are you doing it because you want to feel good and you want him to do things the way you want it to be done? Yes, I understand we are children of God. But if we, all we do is look for the next good feeling. We won't allow God to work through the day-to-day -day circumstances of our lives. We won't allow him to redeem our sufferings. We won't allow him to uh, into the pains and problems and sufferings that are deeply rooted in our lives. Thus, we limit his power. 
Now we begin to look to the next emotional high and all we're doing to ourselves is a disservice. Because we have not given God the opportunity to work during our lowest points or to work during our pain or even to work through our moments of weakness. Understand we must be present and allow God to work in us and not allow our emotions to take over and get the best of us. Paul allowed God to work in every part of his life and thus grace abundantly flew, flowed into him and th through him to others. 2 Corinthians chapter 16, uh, sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, the King James Version. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are com uh, comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces a new patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, also you share in our comfort. Paul makes it clear that believers will sometimes share in the suffering of Jesus. But they will also share in the comfort that only God is able to provide us. So let's not just look for the next emotional high. Or that spiritual highs that so that emotionally we feel great. Let's allow God the opportunity to work through during our pain. Let's allow God the opportunity to work during our suffering. Let's allow God the opportunity to work through our weaknesses. Or through those moments of desperation. This is going to allow you. To open yourself up to him. Allow you to open up the most vulnerable areas of your heart. And thus will create a true and personal relationship with God. Rather than a closed and emotional based relationship. When we open up our hearts and we open up our lives and we allow God to take care of those deeply rooted issues in our lives. When we allow God to take care of those issues that, that we have put, there, put down so deeply in our hearts. And we have buried them so deep in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds. When we allow God to touch those areas of our lives. We are going to see a change in our attitude. We're going to see a change in our walk with God. We are going to see a change in our lives for the better, for the betterment of everyone around us and with our walk with God. We cannot continue to live based off of feelings or based off emotions that we go through. We must allow God to do the work in our lives. Point number five. That limit us. We repent of our sins. It's a good thing. But the problem is we won't let go. Of the guilt. We won't let go of the guilt that sin has caused. In us. Understand sin is a jealous Master and hates to see slaves freed. It will stay with us as guilt in order to beat us down. Then, while that's beating us down, we see that self-doubt starts to creep in our lives, starts to creep in our minds. Are we truly forgiven? Because I still feel guilty. I still feel, feel the shame. This causes us to ultimately doubt our true forgiveness. To doubt the, that God has truly forgiven us. And we end up going back to the same old sin over and over and time after time. I ask you, why? 
Is it because we ask for forgiveness but did not truly believe that you could be forgiven? The Bible says in Micah chapter 7 verse 18 and 19, King James Version. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth or forgives iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He reigneth not his anger forever because he, is, he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou would cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. I say again, he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. True repentance must come with an attitude of honesty. True repentance must come with an attitude of humility. With the firmness to turn away from our sins. True repentance is not going to allow you to go back to your sins again and again and time after time. Check it out. Once you change and you truly repent and you have a new normal, you will have times that you are going to find yourself in a moment of weakness, in a moment of, 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 of shakiness, in a moment, hallelujah, where you feel that you can't go anymore and you start doing what you've done in the past. But listen to me, hallelujah, the devil will come along and say, you haven't been changed. You haven't been changed at all. But this is how you know. Let me tell you, this is how you know you've been changed. It's not that you mess up and do what you used to. It's just that it's no longer your normal. And when it's no longer your normal, you will never go back to it like you used to. You will never go back to it and quite do it like you used to do. Because the moment you get out of the situation, the moment you leave that situation, you change back into who you were supposed to be. Listen, I'll say it a little bit more clearly. Both a sheep and a pig can fall into the same mud. But the difference is in the default. The pig is default to like, to like the mud. But the sheep has a default that says, I don't belong in this mess. I may be in this mess, but I don't belong here. This is not what I was meant to be. This is not where I was meant to be at. The sheep will cry. The sheep will scream and yell and fight because it no longer belongs in the mud. We have to cry. We have to fight. We're going to have a time of weakness. We're going to have a moment, a hallelujah, of mishap. But we have to understand that we're not the same person we used to be. Micah chapter 7 verse 8 says, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy, when I fall, Ha ha, I shall arise when I sit in darkness. Ha ha, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Hallelujah. We have to understand that no matter what happens in our lives, the moment of darkness is just temporary. The moment of mishap is just temporary. When we fall, we will rise up. The just man falls seven times, and seven times he arose again to accomplish this. We can't rely on, on our own power or our own understanding. We've been through that last week during point number three. We must know that God doesn't condemn us any longer and we are truly freed once we truly repent from our sins. We read it in Micah chapter 7 verse 19. So don't allow yourself to be a slave again and again and time after time by shackling yourself to the guilt of your sins because God has forgiven you and has tossed all your sins into the deepest part of the seas. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, and this is the, the NIV version. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm and then do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke, by a yoke of slavery. Walk freely knowing your God has set you free to be a vessel 
in his kingdom. Walk freely knowing that God has forgiven you of your sins. The enemy is going to try to knock you down. The enemy is going to try to make you feel guilty. The enemy is going to try to, to po- put those things in your ways that used to make you fall and used to make you trip over. But understand that we are not the same person anymore. That if we do fall, we have God's grace and mercy on our side that we can go ahead and dust ourselves off and once again stand up and keep walking on the path that God has given us. We have to understand that we cannot continue to limit ourselves by carrying the guilt of our sins once we have repented of them. Point number six, we lack expectation. We limit God in our lives because we don't expect God to move in our lives. We go through the motions in our walk with God because we have heard that the the teachings that God has done miracles throughout the Bible, we have. But I ask you today, when you pray, do you expect God to show up? When you go to work or you go to school, do you expect God to be with you? Do you really expect God to have a plan for your life? I really believe that if we are deeply honest with ourselves here today, some of us would answer no. Some of us may answer sometimes to those questions. I think of the story of Jesus' last entry into Jerusalem. He comes riding on a donkey and the crowds hailed him as the conquering king. They expected he would save them. But they wanted political salvation. They wanted earthly salvation. Not spiritual salvation. Jesus blew away their expectations and in doing so, so many were disappointed. Just like we tend to be disappointed when some of our prayers don't get answered. Or things don't tend to work out the way we believe they should work out. Some were so down on Jesus that they were even calling for his death. Just a few days later, Judas too must have had his expectations dash because he wanted so little from Jesus. Guess what? He expected little and he received little and was crushed by it. We as Christians tend to put God in a box and expect him to act in the expected or planned ways we want. I'm going to be honest with you. I would be lying if I said that I always expect God to radically blow my mind and my expectations away. I would be lying if I said I did. But understand, if God is God, then we should broaden our expectations of him. If God is truly who we say he is, we need to broaden our expectations. He wants to come into our lives powerfully and sometimes unexpectedly. He wants to shake us up and he knows better than we do. He knows what's good for us. He knows what's bad for us. He knows our story. He knows our path. Hallelujah. So he knows what's good and what's wrong for us. We need to raise our expectations. Expect Jesus to move powerfully. Hallelujah. In our lives today. Expect that he will speak to your heart. Expect that miracles will happen in your life. Expect conversation and healing to happen in your life. Expect that God is coming once again, even if we don't know the time nor the hour. Luke chapter 12, verse 40, and this is the new, the, the, the NIV version. You also must be ready because the Son of Man 
will come at an hour when you do not expect it. I do not know a Jesus or a Lord or a King that lies. I don't know somebody that just sits up there and tells fairy tales. If my God and this word tells me that God will come unexpectedly in a time and an hour, hallelujah, that we don't even expect it, I have to believe that. I believe that in my heart. So my expectation is that I have to be ready. My expectation is that I have to be prepared. My expectation is that, hallelujah, that I don't know when God is coming so I have to be ready at all times of the day I tell you this when I was informed that I had COVID-19 I did not know what I was going to do honestly my expectation of being healed went out the window I forgot about my God at that moment. I forgot who he was and what he's done and what he's done in my life at that moment. I allowed myself to be blinded by the sickness until one day after being isolated for 27 days, dragging myself around the house, dragging myself in that room for 27 days because I did not have the strength to stand up, to to go to my door of that room and just grab the food that my kids and my wife had placed outside the door for me because I knew I had to eat so that I can have some energy just to move around or the moments when I would end up in the hospital because I could not breathe I forgot about the God that I serve during that moment but on the 22nd day of my isolation something came over me and I woke up with the song Waymaker in my head And I began to and did not care if I lost. I began to sing and did not care if I lost my breath or even passed out because I couldn't breathe. The next thing you know, honestly, I began to feel a little better every hour that passed. And I began to feel a little better every day that passed by. God reached out in a moment of weakness, in a moment of sickness to ask me if I would truly trust in him. That day reminded me that I knew that God had to be in control of my life. If God healed the blind, oh, I feel God in this place. If God raised Lazarus from the dead, then why do we not expect those same things in our lives? Why don't we expect those miracles that God did before in our lives here today? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, the King James Version, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Jesus Christ is the same today. And Jesus Christ is the same forevermore. If God can do it yesterday, then he can do it today. And if he can do it today, he can do it tomorrow. We must stop limiting our God. We must stop limiting a God who has no limits and who has no boundaries. We must change and get out of the habit, hallelujah, and get out of the mud like the sheep because we don't belong in the mud. We begin, hallelujah, to, we have to begin to trust God. We have to begin sacrificing those things we like to do that many of us take that it takes away from God and what God wants to do. We must stop leaning on our own understanding and expect that God could move in our life. We must live by faith and not emotion. We must stop carrying the guilt of your sins as God has forgave me and you and you and forgotten. So you must forgive and forget too. God has forgave you and has forgotten those sins. So you must forgive and forget too. And we finally must expect the unexpected from God because he is the same, like I mentioned yesterday, today, and forevermore. We forget that because God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, we put those limits on. We don't believe, truly believe, that God can heal me. Well, I'm here to tell you that God healed me. God made miracles in my life happen. I shouldn't be here today. There was moments in time that I didn't know if I was going to make it here to this point today. I should be dead six feet on the ground. Yes, I was hit by a bomb, a rocket attack in Afghanistan, and I shouldn't even be here today. But God's grace and God's mercy took over, and he allowed me to live once again. Hallelujah. That tells me that God works today. That means that God will work tomorrow, and that means God will continue to work forevermore. Understand that these are six things that limit us from getting closer to God and to do the things that God 
wants to do in our lives. The lack of trust. The fact that we fear sacrifice. The fact that we continue to lean on our own understanding. The fact that we continue to live by emotions and feelings. The fact that even though we repent of our sins, we don't let go of the guilt. The fact that we lack expectation. God wants to move in our lives. God wants to take us to different endeavors and wants to take us higher and higher in his kingdom. But the only way we can do that, the only way we can continue to move forward and not question God on why we're not growing spiritually is by taking everything and letting God take control of it. Those deeply rooted issues that you have, those hurts that you have, allowing God to take control of them and allow God to be the king in, his, in your life and in my life. I want to thank you for this opportunity that you have given me to come into your homes here today and to come into your homes over the last two weeks. I want to thank you. And if you need prayer and if you need a, a, a touch from God, we are open here at Promise Church at any time. And you are more than welcome to call us. You are more than welcome to, to come by this church at any time. And we will meet you here and talk to you and pray for you. And if you want to be baptized, we are here to baptize you in Jesus' name. Because that's what we are here to do in Grove Town and in Harlem. is to serve you just like God served us. I thank you and God bless. Wow, wasn't that a powerful word from God? We appreciate Brother Ortiz for taking the time to opening up the scripture and opening up his heart for the word of God. I know that you have certainly been blessed this evening. If you need prayer, please leave a comment or you can contact us here on our website below. My name is Jeremy, the pastor here at Promise Church, and we would like to extend an invitation to you and your family this Sunday at 11 o'clock, 3432 Gordon Highway, Grovetown, Georgia. We are still continuing our social distancing and we will accommodate you however we possibly can. We love and appreciate you and your family and believing that God has great things for you. This is Pastor Jeremy saying God bless and this promise is unto you.